Greetings to all my dear friends and followers of the Blue Cube YouTube channel. I hope you are all doing well. In this video, I will continue my 0 to 100 Adobe Animate software training by teaching you the important and useful selection and gradient tools. The first tool we will be working with is the selection tool. If I right click on this tool, you can also see the sub selection tool here. First, I will select this tool with the shortcut key V. To use this tool, I first need to create a shape here. I will select the rectangle tool and set its color in the color section. I will also choose a color for the stroke. I will also set the size of the stroke to 11 here. Now, by holding down the left mouse button, I will draw the square or rectangle like this. Now I will select the selection tool. Note that by holding down the left mouse button in this area, I can select the entire shape like this. Now I can hold down the left mouse button and change the position of my shape. But what is very important here, my friends, is that when I hold down the left mouse button and still haven't released it, you will see a faint image of the same shape in its previous position. This faint image actually tells us where our shape was before and now we can determine its new position. For example, I want the shape to be here and I release the left mouse button. The reason why this faint shape is shown to us, my friends, is because in animation, when you want to animate a shape or part of an image, you need to know its previous position. This way it helps you and shows you the previous position of the shape and you can choose a new position for your shape. So you can do this by holding down the left mouse button. But friends, if I click on the artboard to deselect my shape, this time with the same selection tool, I will only click on the red inner area called fill. This is the fill, which is also red. Here I can now change the color of the shape again. But when we click here once and drag the mouse again with the left mouse button, we can separate the fill from the stroke. I can select the stroke again and change its color or I can select the stroke and move it. So the selection tool both selects the shape and separates the fill and stroke from each other. Fill is the inner color and stroke is the line around the shape that you can see now separated. I will press the Ctrl plus Z keys on the keyboard again to return the shape to its previous state. You see, friends, again with the same tool, if I click on the stroke, which is now green, and hold down the left mouse button and drag it upwards, you can see that the stroke is now separated from the fill. You can also do this in this way. If I double click, I can move the entire stroke like this. If I click only once, I can separate it individually. So you see that the stroke can also be separated individually. I will press Ctrl plus Z again. But friends, if I hold down the left mouse button and drag it on the stroke, this happens too. Here I hold down the left mouse button and drag it. I also drag it upwards a bit. I select the stroke again and drag it upwards. In the same way downwards. You can see that now a flying saucer has been created for us. Now, if we want to separate the stroke again, just click on it once and drag it like this. So click once to select it and hold down the left mouse button again and drag to separate the stroke. But if you only drag it once, it changes the shape of the stroke. Again, I will press Ctrl plus Z to return to the previous state of my shape. So by now, you have understood how different the selection tool is. Now if I draw another shape here, I press Ctrl plus Z to choose the purple color. I will also consider the yellow color for the stroke. I will create another rectangle. Now, my friends, if I select both shapes with the same selection tool and click on this option that says Expand to Fill, now I will choose a color in the Fill section. You can see that the two shapes I selected have become one shape and no longer have a stroke. Now we only have fills. So the use of expand to fill is this and to convert to fill and if I want to move it now, I can easily select one of them or two shapes, I can move them like this.
I will press Ctrl plus Z again to return the shape to its previous state. I will press Ctrl plus Y to go one step forward. If I select two shapes again and this time click on the Create Object option, our two shapes will be converted into one object. I will click on it. In fact, now our two shapes have become one shape like this. Now I can change the fill and see what happens. I will change the fill color and also change the stroke. So in this case, when we came and selected the Create Object option here, our two shapes became one shape and we can change the fill and stroke simultaneously. I will press Ctrl plus Z again and go back to the previous state. Also, my friends, if I come and hold down the left side and select a part of the shape, you can see that only a part of the shape is selected and I can separate the extra part. See how much this tool and feature can help us, my friends, in animation and how powerful this tool is. I will press Ctrl plus Z again to return the shape to its previous state. I will right-click on the Selection tool again and select the Subselection tool, which has the shortcut key A. Using this tool, I can select this point. You see, when I select it, I can move it and create a new shape for myself. In addition to what I said, my friends, we can select and change the corners of the shape. If I hold down the Alt button on one of these points along with the left click, I can create a curve for my shape using these levers. We can change the shape of our shape using any of these levers. As you can see, the shape changes completely using these levers, which we will cover in detail in future lessons. If I hold down the Alt button again, I can move these levers individually. Now using the same subselection tool and holding down the left mouse button, I will select my shape and press the Delete key to delete it. I will create a new shape for myself like this again. The next tool, my friends, is the Free Transform tool, and as the name suggests, it moves the shape. If we select the whole shape and drag it, the whole shape will be moved for us like this. The same faint shape is also shown to us again. If you only click in the inner area, it will separate the inner shape and the fill area again. I will press Ctrl plus Z. But another thing it does is change the size of the shape. If I hold down the left mouse button from here and drag, the fill will be made smaller for me like this. I will press Ctrl plus Z. But if I select both fill and stroke and hold down the click and drag again, it will make both fill and stroke smaller for us. We can do this from any direction. I will press Ctrl plus Z again to return the shape to its previous state. You can rotate the shape using the Free Transform tool. First, select the whole shape and rotate the shape like this. If I hold down the Shift button, I can rotate the shape in 45 degree increments. That is, a 45 degree rotation is created with each rotation. I will press Ctrl plus Z again. I will select the whole shape. If I hold down the Shift button, the shape will be scaled proportionally for me. Now if I select the whole shape again, you can see that the mouse icon has changed and a rotation mode has been created for it. In this case, if I hold down the Alt button and rotate the shape, you can see that the rotation is created for me from the opposite corner like this. I will press Ctrl plus Z. If I do the rotation to this side while holding down the Alt button, now the rotation from the right side will be done for me like this. I will press Ctrl plus Z. We can also come here in the Properties panel and scale the shape. Using the Position and Size tools here, we can scale the shape proportionally. We can also move the shape on the x-axis and the y-axis from this part. If you want to scale the shape disproportionately, you can click on the lock icon and change the size of the shape. In fact, scale your shape disproportionately. I will press Ctrl plus Z to return the shape to its previous state. I will select the shape and delete it. The next tool, my friends, is in this section. If I right-click on the Free Transform tool, you can see that there is a Gradient Transform tool here. To be able to use this tool, we must first create a shape. In the Fill section, I will choose the Gradient mode, which includes several colors, 
and here I will create a rectangle like this. Now I will right-click on the Free Transform tool here and select the Gradient Transform tool. If I double-click here now, I can come from this corner and change the gradient mode like this or I can move the colors from this point. I will explain more in future videos when we come to the lesson on colors and gradients. Now I just wanted to show you the tool and how we can use it. Okay, instead of a gradient, I will now choose only one color for my shape. Again, I will quickly create a few more shapes like this using the rectangle tool. Now, my friends, if I right-click here in the tools section, there are other tools here such as Lasso, Polygon, and Magic Wand that we can use to select shapes. For example, if I select the Lasso tool, I can draw a line around the shapes I want like this and these shapes are now selected for us. I will move them with the Free Transform tool. I can also choose the Polygon tool instead of the Lasso tool. Just by clicking the left mouse button and clicking on the parts that we want, we can select them like this. Finally, I come here and double click. Now only these parts that we selected are selected for us. I will move them with the Free Transform tool. Okay. Let me select the shape and change its color to explain the next tool. The next tool, my friends, is also the Magic Wand tool, which I will right-click here and select. This tool selects similar colors by clicking on one color, which is more useful for photos because it works in pixels. To use this tool, I will quickly import a photo and make it much smaller. Now with the Selection tool, when we have selected the photo, I will click on the Break Apart option in the Modify menu. Now using the Magic Wand tool, I will click on this area to select similar colors, and here I will hold down the left mouse button and drag. I will select this area and drag it like this. Now you can see that it selects the area where the colors are similar like this. I will press Ctrl plus Z to return to the previous state. Okay, my friends, I will not make the training too long. Be sure to practice all of these things that I have told you well, as they are very important and we will use the same tools in all future projects. Thank you for liking the videos and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. Goodbye for now.